Okay, so hi everyone, uh, we'll start today. It's analytics and reporting. Uh, it's a big topic. There's a lot we can do. Uh, we decided uh, for a specific approach, Dominic and I, uh, we're gonna show you uh, how to create your own dashboard. So uh, depending on your level of uh, knowledge on the Salesforce platform and client, uh, maybe it's gonna be either too easy or we're gonna push the envelope a little bit on the side of the dashboard si uh, side. So, uh, we're, but we're gonna start um, uh, looking deeper into the dashboard capacity that Salesforce offer a uh, link to the client objects. So good recap, Dominic. Makes sense. I couldn't have done it better. <laughs> I'm sure you could. Uh, Again, thank you for joining us, uh, Dominic. Uh, we um, we have a lot of good news. I think this is something we're going to start doing in the next event we're going to do together. The uh, after we've done with that success series, we're going to do it every two months uh, meeting. Uh, I'm going to show it in a slide or two. I think it's this one. Yeah, uh, we call that the client showcase. So we're going to share a lot of uh, new successes uh, with Drake here and Dominic this week. We have a lot of new customer that are are, are coming in. Uh, so uh, in the ecosystem, so we're very, very excited to uh, to have. The those people. I believe there might be some in this webinar. Uh, so like I was saying, today it's analytics and reporting. Next week, we will be doing service and community. So showing you what we can expose on a community. Uh, so uh, everything in regards of exposing project to your, uh, to your customer or, uh, for example, the timesheet entry for your external consultant. And after that, March 7th, uh, we're going to do the customer showcase. Uh, so we're still looking for people that want to show us uh, how they use uh, the platform, maybe that you're also stretching uh, the end uh, is it that stretching the envelope uh, pushing the envelope uh so may uh, we look still looking for a few customers so uh, let us know if you want to show something in your environment Okay, analytics and reporting. Uh, let's jump in. Um, as you know, we've uh, restructured, reshuffle a bit the modules, but it's part of one, one of our nine modules uh, at Lion. So analytics and reporting, it's key. Um, it's all about measurable data numbers. Uh, so it's it's important. It's pretty much we're doing this pretty much for that in the end goal. It's always about about uh, seeing where you're going, and uh, this is a, usually a core requirement uh, when we implement a client for the first time. So to have better visibility into your project. So the capacity that clients offer, uh, we do uh, have reports and graph that you put can put directly in the uh, different object. We saw that uh, during past demo. Uh, you, uh, we do have a subset of dashboard uh, and that you can also subscribe to, the, to those dashboards so you can receive them by email, for example, every Sunday if you don't consume them in real time in the system. Uh, we can have them in the home page. Uh, this is all, I'll start by demo, but this is also we are, uh, how we started in the past. Um, and it's all about business and diligence, and it's usually always live data because uh, you're always uh, inputting hours in your project, so uh, you're always invoicing new things, so it's always up-to-date information. There's different way. I don't think we're going to go too deep here today, but on the in term of exporting to Excel. Uh, so if ever you want to export data, it's easy to do. And also, if you add to connect another system, it's really uh, Salesforce and client offer a, a, a different way to connect to the system. So it's really easy. Okay. At the bottom, uh, we have nine new dashboard. This is a commitment uh, I've. Uh, I made a few months ago already uh, that we're going to provide more dashboard. Uh, I've been with Michael, uh, our product manager. We've been uh, looking at it. We've been trying to do some different things. But uh, as the angle we took for this particular uh, webinar today, uh, it's really specific to every business. So we're trying to get a, a set of nine dashboard that's going to be good and a good overview. But I'm expecting that all of you will need to tweak and fine tune those dashboards and reports for your specific needs. So that's why I think it was a good idea to give you a, a training or a coaching session on how you can uh, better handle uh, the dashboard and reporting tool uh, within Salesforce so you can build something for your own. Make sense? Uh, and then uh, another thing we're looking into in the future in, in terms of analytic and reporting at client, it's uh, artificial intelligence. So everything AI, so prediction. Uh, so um, teaching the system to recognize some pattern. Uh, so uh, to predict uh, peak and valleys. So this is something that we'll be uh, doing in the next few uh, iteration. 
Okay, uh, benefits, I'm gonna get into the details uh, when I, I'm gonna start the demo. So let's jump right into it. Uh, the agenda, pretty simple. I'm gonna document what we're trying to achieve. So the why I'm, I'm gonna document everything in the, in, in the demo itself. So let's jump right into the environment. So. Okay, so this is our home page. Um, as you can see, we have reports here. Um, the idea of the, the demo, we're creating a new dashboard from scratch. Okay, so the first thing I have, uh, I do uh, when I use uh, the system and I have a new request or I have a new idea, I will start. Dominic, you see my screen, right? Yeah. Uh, you will start and you would open up. I would create a new notes if I don't have already an existing one. If I had an existing one, I would just come here and I would search. You can also specify that you're only looking for notes if you're searching. But uh, let's say now this is a new request. I need to create a new dashboard. So uh, dashboard, brainstorm. And uh, usually what I do is I'm doing a naming convention. I always put my initials. So I know it's mine. If I wanted to share with Dominic, I could just hit the share button and share it. So uh, I, if there's one thing that you should try to use more and that I'm putting a lot of emphasis and I know it's it's core Salesforce, but those notes are awesome because you can link it to everything. Okay, so as uh, the, the title of a, a good book from uh, Simon Sinek, I like to uh, start with why. <laughs> so uh, why? So uh, I would come in and it's really important when we start a dashboard to really identify what we're doing because you can lose a lot of time just trying to align. So why, let me tell you why. So the idea is that if you wanna steer your, uh, your ship in the good direction, you absolutely need to know where you are and where you're going. So it's a, it's a beautiful sentence, uh, but the, the idea, it's, it's true in, th in the term of uh, uh, we need to know what's happening. Uh, so this is what we're going to focus today. So the RY will be uh, where we are. So our, where we are, so the actuals. Okay, so we're going to look at actuals. We're, maybe if we have time at the end with Dominic, we can look at prediction and forecasting and utilization. Uh, but for now, the dashboard we're building, it's about actuals. So uh, after the why, uh, the, uh, the idea it's uh, when, uh, when are we doing this? So uh, at, uh, I'm gonna put my Drakia at. So at Drakia, we are uh, following and implementing our stuff for ourselves a methodology called EOS. So it's the entrepreneurial operating system. So uh, in, um, in here, uh, the concept is that, uh, bear with me just a second while I <laughs> put things in perspective. So that methodology, it, 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 it tells us and it helps us structure the sixth part of our business. So you need to have a good vision. You need to have the right people in the right seat. You need to collect data. Uh, you need to uh, be aware of all the issues and do something about it. Uh, you need to document and have a proper process and you need to create traction. So those six parts of your business, this is what that methodology does uh, and it's helping us a lot. But if you're looking at the top right corner, it's not a corner because it's a circle, but here, that, uh, that data side. So you see there's a scorecard and measure measurable. So if you wanna be able to give direction to your team and if you wanna be able to course correct, you absolutely need to have visibility uh, on your data. So for us, a scorecard is important and a measurable within uh, is also. And uh, if I'm coming back to the when, when I'm gonna use that, it's uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a series of meeting we're doing with the EOS. So every week we're doing a EOS, every month we're looking at different uh, subset of data and every quarter and every year. So for now, uh, it would be for, our, it's called, those meetings are called L10. So it would be L10 weekly meeting. So here in the when it's uh, uh, it's weekly, uh, which is important. And then you would have the who. So with whom I'm looking at that. Is it for my staff? Do I need to motivate my staff and look at some numbers and create visibility on our target? Or it's more to report to my management team or to my uh, to the leadership team. So for us, in this case, uh, in, in that LTM for us, the concept it's called the leadership team. So the leadership team. Okay, and uh, when I have the where, the who, um, two, two, two. and then I'm guessing it would be kind of the indicator, right? So uh, the what, uh, the, there's two things. So there's the what and there's the, the, the specific. So what do we want? So as uh, we're talking, 
talking about where we are. So we're talking about actual. So a good dashboard for actuals could be something like revenue that you want to have a scorecard. So we have measure, we have a scorecard we're looking every week. We have a measurable that's going to give us a pulse of our business. So what are those uh, indicator that's going to tell us if our business is going well or bad. So for us, there is a few. There's only seven. Um, we're trying to keep it to seven, but there's only seven. And one of it is would be uh, the revenue, revenue per week, uh, per week per month, but revenue. And then we would have a percentage billable. I think this is, would be key for everybody that's uh, invoicing on a time and expense model. Uh, you need to know how much uh, billable work your people are doing and optimize that value. If you are at 50% billable, you definitely need to work out and to see how you can increase that. Uh, after that, maybe another important indicator would be the average hourly rate of your project. So uh, when you're doing time and expense, again, either you do more resource, more hours, or you do a higher rate. So there's not a ton of option when you do a pure time and expense. So keeping an eye of average or really rate is important. And after that, for sure, you would need something for, for example, on the hour side, maybe some uh, uh, hours per resource uh, or hours per project. So we get a kind of a high level overview. Okay. So that would be the premises of before we do anything, opening up the system, you need to answer at least that subset of question. I'm not telling you that this is perfect, but at least you need to be aware of those things if you want to do anything good uh, with the data. Dominic? It's just, uh, yeah, I had an idea that came up when we say when and then the who also is, you know, those dashboards, those reports, because I have that questions, uh, you know, here and there and, and uh, the implementation uh, process where, you know, people ask, okay, a lot of data there. How do we ensure that this data keeps up to date and you know, remains valid and true? And, and one way of doing it is those dashboards. And as you integrate them into your weekly meeting standups and all of that, you know, people will see those data and will make sure that next time if they've forgotten to update a project uh, and they got caught into meeting next next week it's going to be updated um, so it's it's exposing the data make sure that the data still uh, still is valid and and keeps the health of your data also so just yeah. another use of that uh, when we're doing those meeting we're looking at screens right we're looking at scorecards uh, whatever uh, the, the format is you're still looking at matrix and it should be an habit of looking at this with the, your team and it will that visibility is going to create accountability so for me the dashboard is central uh, this if we if we're not looking at dashboard on a weekly basis at a minimum uh, clearly there's something not configured properly in the system in a sense unless you're just executing your work right but as soon as you want to have a picture you need to have dashboard and those dashboard change i'm doing one dashboard every uh, month most probably because the, the things i want to investigate and the, the thing i need to course correct is changing so i'm adapting my dashboard to see different kind of okay. so it's not a, a one for all recipe so yeah, I'll, I have a question, but I'll, we'll keep it just for. Uh, for so visit. the what? Okay, so the which object for now, and also this is important. When you want to do a dashboard, it's important to have like a topic in mind and a story in mind. So now we're talking about actuals. It's a story, so we don't want to have like multiple. We could, but we don't want to have uh, too many objects or different things we're looking at at the same time. So we want to keep it kind of simple. So for now, for us, uh, we're going to look at timesheet splits. Okay, I've been talking about that object a lot during those webinar, but the timesheet split is the smaller increment of time uh, that can be logged in the system. And you, with that, you know, the resource, the rate, the hours, uh, we're going to take an example, but this is going to be our object and we're going to do everything around it to get there. Okay, so let's move on into creating what we need. If there's any question, as usual, don't hesitate. If you want to gear the direction uh, uh, of the discussion, let me know as well. If you want me to uh, go deeper in some aspect. So let's first open up uh, dashboard. And to, um, I'm not going to do go into details of folders and where I create them. Uh, but this is going to be uh, where we are, actuals. Okay, and I'm going to put the, you always have the choice to put in a private folder or a public folder. Let's, uh, let's put it in the uh, art of the possible folder. Okay, so we have dash dashboard now that we have created. Okay, uh, 
a dashboard, if I want to add component to it, it's going to show me reports. Okay, but I don't have the reports yet of what I want to show. So let's do that uh, as the first step. Let's create our first report because a dashboard work with reports. So we had that dashboard open. We can leave it open. Now we're going to go to reports. And you have the new report button here. I'm going to hit it. And I'm going to search. Okay, I'm going to search for a split. Okay, you can see that I have a lot of like timesheets, timesheets with timesheet split. Okay, I could use that one. It could be good enough. But often I like to have only one object in my report, not having like a relationship of object, like a project with task or a project with task with timesheet. I like to have that just single object. So we're gonna look at that and it doesn't exist. If you scroll by default, it doesn't exist. At least in that, that environment it doesn't exist. So we're gonna create that new timesheet split, timesheet split report type, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. it's not there yet so that's a more a bit technical part so i'm going to switch to uh to set up i'm going to go in the quick find i'm going to type report type and uh it's not there right so i'm going to just go ahead i'm going to create a new custom report type what it allows you to do it's it you, first you need to select the primary object. So for example, if I wanted to have a project uh, with task, I would start with the project object. For us, we would just want a simple one level. So we're gonna use the timesheet splits. And since it's really simple, we're gonna also name it just timesheet split. Could have a category for it. Let me just put it in other and deploy it right away, okay. So with that, I have that timesheet split object. If I wanted to add another one, I could select another object related to it. So for example, the timesheet split object, you see there's a link to the invoice line item. So if I wanted to have a timesheet split with or uh, having that kind of relationship, I could do it uh, as well. For us at this point, we just wanna have uh, the single timesheet split object. So we don't wanna have that uh, second level. Okay. And we can have up to four, we can get, have up to four uh, levels of uh, information. So we get the, the parent, the most parent one and dig up to four levels down uh, and having four objects linked together with or without, uh, you know, that will influence the way it shows the information and what shows also. Meaning that if it's with, meaning that if you say a project with a task, any projects that are out there without task won't show in your report. So that's important. To, that's why we need to have that that what and how and, and what we're looking to get into that report and that dashboard because the report type will influence and we need to plan that ahead also knowing what's the end goal. And in our cases, you're absolutely right. I wanted to have only timesheet splits with the fact that they could have or not timesheet details or timesheet. So uh, usually they always have those, but if I want to make sure that I'm getting everything in the system, and not having that with or without with without the relationship, then it's uh, ensuring me that I'm going to receive everything. Okay, so there's other thing we're going to come back to it in, in terms of the report type, we're going to come back to it, but let's go back to creating our new report. Okay, so now that we've created that new report type, when I'm hitting the new report button, if I'm searching for, uh, I could search just for splits, it's going to be here, timesheet splits, going to take it. And it shows you, you see, you see the objects. So it would show differently if I had a different relationship. So you can see what I'm, what we are using. And for us, I'm gonna tell you why afterwards, but I'm gonna just make sure that I have everything, all timesheet split in the system. So that's a trick. Usually when you start a dashboard or you start a report, it's better to have too much data and not focusing on the date so much and too many filters. So for now, I'm gonna take everything and I'm gonna show you something else afterwards. So I'm gonna remove the filter that's been created by default. I'm just gonna put it to the range to all time and meaning that now I'm having everything. Okay, the, for, for the people that don't know the object, the timesheet split object, if you open the left panel, uh, you can see all the fields that are available on that timesheet split, okay? The one that we are interested in are date. I'm double clicking here. Uh, we're looking for, uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, bill amount. 
I'm gonna go with the <clears throat> project resource name. I could have the role, could be of interest. I'm gonna go with the time comments, so the notes that we're taking every time the loading time. Oh, hours, most probably. Hours, yeah. Hours. And uh, let's, I think it's a good start, okay? I think so, we've mentioned it a few times, but really the timesheet split, when you do the reports on hours, this is where you want to go. This is the most reliable level of information. That's the source, the single source of truth for hours that are logged in. That's timesheet splits. Exactly. So uh, let me just uh, put that one just to make sure that the data is correct. So sometime as well, when you're creating, you're going to put more just to see what's there. And, and in client, uh, you, you saw that, right? There's like uh, 20 fields that uh, pretty much say the same thing, but they all a bit different. So sometimes you want to see more than one field to make sure that you're looking at the good one. Is it the log? Is it the billable hours? Is it the, so in this case, it's, it's a, there's not that many, but when you're looking at, for example, a task or a project, there's a ton of field that you might want to double check. Okay. Uh, and then um, we could have the bill rate or cost even information if we wanted to look into this. But for now, let's keep it this way. Uh, the project, I didn't put the project yet. Okay. I'm going to close that panel. I'm going to just zoom out a little bit so I can have a better view. And um, for now, here I have billable and non-billable hours. So that's also important to, uh, to, uh, to notice. Uh, and, uh, the, um, and I might want to do just for now, I'm going to do just a billable uh, timesheet split. I'm going to leave out all the non-billable just to make sure that I'm just having the one that we are billing to the customer, nothing else. Okay. Just a, gonna... a side note on that. If you go back to your filter, uh, there's a lock. Uh, when you go on the filter, you can either lock it or leave it open. Uh, if we lock it, it means that you know people that would consume that report would not be able to change that filter. So if it's very important because it's you know either in a dashboard, you don't want people necessarily to change those filtering. Uh, at some point, if it's really in integral to your definition of that report, you need to you know it's better to lock it, uh, making sure that you know. It's not changed by mistake. And safe. Yeah, quite and often safe, yeah. this could happen, yep. depending on your rights and who can do what within your dashboard. Okay, so now we have a, a flat report, right? There's nothing special here. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a pure line by line um, report. So we're going to, first we're going to group it. So I'm going to take the date and it's not the created date that's important in timesheet split. It's the date field because you could create today for hours I've logged yesterday or two weeks ago. So you're really, and that's the field for the, uh, the real date. So I'm going to group it with the date field uh, because we're going to do things with uh, resource. So I'm going to also uh, group it by the resource name and I'm going to re uh, group it as well by project. So it's going to be a bit more complex to consume here, but still um, that's not the purpose because we're going to use that report in a dashboard. Okay, so I'm, I'm giving me myself the most option. Uh, if you add, in this case, it's a weekly report. So I want to see daily information. I don't want to see weekly. I want to see daily. So, but if I wanted to, I've seen daily, I could have grouped that date by calendar week. So you see now it's going to be a range of date for the grouping, or I could have even, even done calendar month. So I could have like September, and we see you have data from September, but July, uh, August. In our case, and in, in that specific case, I just want to go back to uh, group day by day. And I was sorted that way. Okay. Uh, maybe just something of interest uh, here, for example, bill rate. I could have a summarize, it, it, so you see it can summarize it, so we can do a sum or average. So for example, a bill rate doesn't make sense to have a sum, so maybe I just want to have the average. Uh, it work? Yeah. Uh, or for, for example, here the bill amount or the hours, I would do want to summarize by sum, so it does that by default for pretty much all currency and uh, numerical value numbers. Uh, but if you want to change the behavior, you could change it from here. Okay, um, Dominic, anything else for now? I think we're good, right? Yep, good. Safe. So I'm gonna save and run. So again, when I'm gonna, uh, it's gonna ask me. So I do recommend that you find a way that uh, uh, you have a naming convention. For me, I do a dashboard, for example, to know that I'm gonna use that report in the dashboard. And then I say it's a timesheet split, all billable 
and I often I, when I don't want anybody to mess up my thing I put my initials <laughs> and then again if I want to make it public so other people can consume it I'm going to put it in a, a, a folder so I'm going to select the public report folder you've put my initials in front DB it's, it's yeah I know it's for dashboard dashboard <laughs> Okay, so we have our first report to work with. And you I will see we don't need to create 22 reports. We can work a lot with just one. Okay, so let's go back to our dashboard. And then let's do plus component, the most recent one. If you needed to search or look at the info folder, you could here on the left. But uh, the most recent one is going to be shown here. So it's the one we just created. Let's use it. It's exciting because now there's a ton of thing to do. And this is where it gets also complex. How do we show our data? Numbers, graph, tabs per date, per week, per month, group by name, group by project, group. It, it, it can be very complex. So uh, there's things that we can easily do. So let's just first drop a table, okay? A table that's gonna give us relevant information. So we do one, for example, the date, because we're gonna not look at the date. We're going to be looking at the time comments, the hours, time off, we don't care, bill rate, not as much, uh, the role, neither, and maybe the project. And date, project, our resource, we don't have the resource, project resource name, okay? So, like that. And then I want to sort by date and there's a different option and I want to put a good title. So this would be time comments. Okay, so that would use that tab, that tab here that, that we're creating, that table, just to look at every time entry that's been made in the system for the uh, period we're going to look into. Okay, so that, that's the idea. So this is a time comment uh, table. I'm going to add it. It's a table, so I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Okay, so already I can see that the last latest, but we're still in preview mode, but if it was the real thing, the last uh, information was entered on the uh, 20. Hmm? Uh, it might be some uh, timesheet comments from uh, the future. You're logging time in the future, Dominic. Are you uh, entering your timesheet for, for future project? <laughs> oh, I might've done that in the demo, yes. So uh, this we could correct. We could tell our guys that's the idea as well, right? Uh, how come you're logging a uh, time for the future? You should only log real hours that you've worked on your project. Uh, so that's the first thing that we can use just to see the data. Uh, and then what we want to do, we if we recall our um, the matrix we wanted, we wanted revenue. So this one is billable. Oh, and that, that time comments actually would be time comments on the billable hours, right? So maybe it would have been better on the non-billable as well. Okay. But let's let's do a number for the revenue. Okay, so I'm going to just select that uh, number. Uh, for now, I'm going to just change the color to all the black because the range, I you, as you will see uh, soon, will be dynamic. So I don't want to put something anything here. I might not want to change the number of decimal. In our case, we're going to put zero. And the title would be revenue. That's it. And I'm not specifying a, specifying a date range for now. Okay, so now I have that component for revenue. Okay, and this and this, and we've mentioned as well, if I'm going back, okay, I still have my notes. I can again easily go back to my notes and see, okay, what did we say? Uh, average hourly rate, percentage billable, revenue per week. Okay, so uh, revenue, shortcut for that. Uh, revenue we've done. So let's work on the hours resource project. That's a simpler one. Okay, so I'm gonna add another component. Same report again. I'm not changing my report. Oh no, actually we're gonna create a new report and remove the uh, billable. Okay. So here I'm coming back to my timesheet, uh, my report timesheet split. Whatever uh, you can save as, or if in the other interface, you can, uh, yeah, I think it's always called save as and not clone. So I'm gonna save this one and I'm just gonna remove the billable name on it. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna edit. If you look at the name, uh, it's not the, uh, the, the old one, it's the new one. And for this one, I'm gonna remove the filter. So I'm getting all hours. Okay, uh, going back to my dashboard. 
time sheet split all, it's there already. And now what we want to do is we want to see per date, what did our resource do? Okay, so we're going to do a report like this by date and then group by project resource. And the, you know, the column we will want, it was hours, right? The requirements was for hours. So we're going to put hours. Uh, we're going to do uh, the small place. It's good. Date, we're going to sort it the other way around. And then the project resource name is going to be the other parameter. So let's put our placeholder at the end. And this is also interesting and be careful of this. So it's showing a max group of 100, meaning that if you have more than 100 resource or more on 100 project you're looking at the same time, there's something that's going to be missing from that thing. So we, that's why the next step for us is going to be to work with the date range. Okay. Uh, for those graph, I prefer to put the legend at the bottom and this one I have more landscape. And in this case, it's going to be the title is going to be hours per uh, resource. resource. And add it. I'm going to do this exact same thing, but hours per project. So same report. I'm going to go faster for this one. So instead of the project resource here, I'm going to switch to project name. So again, a date, then project name. Not the bill rate, but the number of hours. I could have put revenue if I wanted to. Uh, that. And then hours per project. There's also the color scheme that you could play with, but there's not a ton of option here. I'll show you later. There's other option to play with colors. Okay, so now we have those two reports. Uh, I'm going to move them. This is a bit tricky. Uh, you need to use the scroll wheel quite often to get it right. So and you need to go slow. And because this, there's a lot of data in it, I'm gonna make it bigger. Like I said, uh, <laughs> sensitive. Okay, I'm guessing we should have removed as well um, the uh, time off. So um, we're, uh, we're, we're going pretty much in the uh, already halfway uh, point at this point for this webinar. Uh, but uh, we can see already that year, it's weird that everybody is clocking eight hours. Uh, so uh, most probably, and those right are in the future, right? So those are time offs. So we will need to go back and remove those from our report. Okay, that's, uh, that's something we're gonna do together. Okay, so um, we're good for now, let's save. And let's look at it, okay? Save and done. So now we have our report uh, that's showing the revenue we did for all time. I'm surprised, I think when you save and done, you need quite often to refresh. Dominic, is it possible we only have $124 of revenue uh, in the system? <laughs> I'm guessing it's, uh, it's more a refresh problem, yeah or I didn't select the good column in my, my, my dashboard. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see. As you can see, I can only refresh uh, once a minute. Uh, let's, let's do something, okay? Let's uh, put a filter on the dates. And also we can, after I've put the filters, if that's still the number, we're gonna investigate why we have that, that small number here. Okay, so let's go back into the edit of that dashboard. And here on the right, there's another plus button for filter. Filter, it's tricky, okay? Because uh, uh, if you're not talking about the same object, it needs to be a filter that you have some value that correspond to. So uh, sometimes you need to uh, really stretch what you're trying to do, or in our case, because we're only looking at timesheet split, it's gonna be easy. But let's say you had some project with project assignment and resource, and you only wanna see yours. It's tough because you're not always the owner of the record. So those filter, filter are great for some specific use case. It's not the perfect tool, but in our case, what we want to do is going to be great. So the fill that we're going to filter for is going to be the date. Okay. And then I'm going to add some filter value. And what's great here is that you can use relative, 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 relative dates. Okay. So let's say I wanted to do last week. I would just write last week here. And then I would do apply. And I would add another one. And I could say this quarter. Okay. 
or I could say uh, last really is last 30 days or last six months. So depending uh, sometime when you do just months base, it's boring because your data uh, will, uh, at the beginning of the month, you don't see your data at all. At the end, you see everything. So if you do a last 30 days instead, you always have rolling value. So again, it depends what you want to see. You want to see just the week, you want to see a period. So you can put a lot of value here. And for us, it's on the date field. So I'm going to add that filter. And the way that it uh, go back and filters the data, you see now that there's a sm small filter account uh, icon here. And it shows that the filter date is linked on date. And there's no other option. It's because it's the same object and I, don't, I cannot change it at all. Uh, when you're using different object, you can change. You have a little bit of flexibility, but it's not, it's not perfect. But for our case, it's, it's exactly what you want. Okay. Since it's, we're it's here, the average is the average you're using instead of uh, the total measure was the average build rate, which yeah. is also uh, great, right? Mm -hmm. It was also one of the metric we wanted, so we did it uh, without knowing. So let me but just in this change case, it'd the be title. total uh, or it, yeah. average rate. I thought that this one would be more difficult, but this is we have the average because we put on the report the average hours. Um, in the way that we did it at Drakia, for example, we have a formula that's calculating, calculating those. So uh, I would need to double check, but I think it's simpler than what I expected to get that number in here now, which is a good thing. Yeah. Time, then, 20, time, 20 minutes time check. If, uh, perfect. So let's add uh, now the billable for revenue uh, now. So uh, instead, it's, again, it's just a number. Maybe I want to have a gauge and then specific a range, specify a range for it. So if it's always a week frame that we're looking at, having a gauge could make a, total, a lot of sense. If you're playing with the range, uh, the range of dates, then those, uh, those uh, colors don't work as well. Uh, so this would be revenue now. Sum of bill amount. Oh, better. Again, better. Depend on better. the time frame. Depends on the <laughs> yeah, for for a month that or for a week, that'd be good for a week. Depend on how many resources. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, we're, we're pretty much we're getting there. Uh, we have that report. We've added a filter. Uh, sometime what you could also do, uh, let's add another filter for the resource name. Okay, so if we go with uh, project resource, project resource name, and it's Oliver, right? We're using Dominic. Oliver operations, yeah. And instead of doing equals, I could go for, for example, start with. And if I only have one Oliver, it works well. If I have two, it doesn't work. But in our case, let's do this. So I'm going to put Oliver uh, as one of the uh, resource name. And again, it's the project resource name that we're using. So uh, sometime, um, I think this should work even with external resource. But if you would have used owner of the record, then uh, if the if you're using external resource, they're not the owner of their timesheet if they're not logging their own time. So again, you need to be careful with the filter you're, you're putting here. But this one makes sense. So let's save it. Let's go done. And now we could still use the refresh button, but uh, now what you can do is that you can pick your uh, your filter. So let's do now last six months. So now it's generating, I'll say, so average rate for the last six months has been 169. Our revenue, 116K. Okay, Dominic, are you laughing? You don't like it? Yeah, it's, it's too low. I need to work on that, Enik. Yeah, for sure. Let's look at the last 30 day. Did you improve for the last six months? Because we've been talking about it for a long time now, Dominic. Yeah, oh, no. yes, 301. Not 301, yeah, but 26K. But yeah. <laughs> now we need to refocus, not on the rate. You're not selling anymore. <laughs> Your rate is way too high. You don't have as much revenue. Okay, so um, this is, we're, we're pretty much getting there. We have already, uh, if I'm going back again to my notes, we have percentage billable, we don't have it, but we have average our real rate, we have hours, uh, whoops, and we have all this here as well. Okay, so then the remaining would be percentage billable. 
Is it? I have. I, I, could you cover maybe the uh, the different options we have also as far as subscribing and uh, you know looking as someone? That's yeah. another because we have a question here that says uh, earlier because if you know for people to see the data, do they need to have the license uh, so that they they look at the data? So the uh, view data as would be uh, yeah. one so, way. So yeah. So there's a couple of things. So. Uh... So I've hit the edit mode and then I've hit the gear icon here. This is where I can rechange the name, uh, the folder, but also who we view the dashboard as. For now, I'm using me. So I'm the Salesforce admin of that system. So meaning that everybody that's going to run that dashboard is going to see the data as me. So depending on what you select here, uh, you're going to be able to, uh, uh, you're going to see different information. So again, this you need to be careful. Uh, and if you want to specify the dashboard viewer, meaning, for example, in client by default, depending on your permission set, but you only see your project or you even see only your task, meaning that you wouldn't see all those revenue. You would only see the revenue, uh, the timesheet split associated to your stuff, which is really interesting as well, because uh, uh, this way they can see their own revenue without seeing the entire company and we were just building one dashboard to do that so but then the top executive if they have the rights to see everything then those guys they could see everything so that's just a, the question was you know if we need to have the license one way of showing the data would be to have view dashboard as someone that has uh, the license and can view the data the only downside is that you know you wouldn't be able to dig into the data so if you were to click on it and access it then you wouldn't have access to it um, so usually if you want people to interact with uh, the information they would need to have the proper licensing for that and uh, when you're saying dig in, so anything I want to, for example, if I want to click here, the report is going to bring me to that subset and it's going to also put the filter. I'm not sure if I had a filter. No, I didn't. Uh, so let me put one filter. No, uh, I don't think it was. Okay, let me click back. So uh, it's going to open that, that report, the one we did before. And usually the filter, uh, the filter usually is applied. I don't know why it's not. It's because you're, it's because you're like opening the report. But if you just click on one section of the, um, uh, you know, in ah, on the bar, okay, yeah, yeah sorry, this yeah. is where you have the, this, the filter. Okay, so then it, it filter it. So you can see here the yeah. dates has been filtered to show it only showed me that. And then um, I can, but this information, you wouldn't be able to see it. That's what you're saying, Dominic, right? Yes, you'd only see the dashboard itself if you don't have the license, if you've set it up to see as someone else. Okay. You can also subscribe to dashboard and receive it by email, like I was saying. So if you wanna do that to automate, if people are not consuming dashboard and uh, just to finish up on filter, I can put both at the same time, right? So last 30 day for only Oliver or this, one, this week for Oliver only. And then I can see, and what I like to do uh, is like a top, top five project or top five task to see which one are we making the most most hours on. So uh, there's a ton of variation of, the, of that that we can do, that we can do or you could do. So um, yeah, we can stretch uh, here. Okay, so there's one thing uh, we were looking at before and I'm not sure if, uh, there's one more thing I wanna show you in terms of uh, the report. So let me open the, the real report here. So in this case, if I'm going editing mode, I'm just gonna remove Oliver. That's one of the things sometime that you saw that because I've selected the Oliver filter was there. So you need to delete it. Otherwise, if I would have saved it, the filter would have remained. So that's usually one of the big source of uh, not seeing the data. Uh, let's say I wanted to uh, filter out some uh, some of the the lines based on, for example, on the um, if it was from a, a PTO or if it was from uh, I wanted to have a custom field that's for let's say that is on the task, and I want to refer it back into that report. Okay, so let's say uh, I, I have time of type here, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, Dominic, Maybe we have on the time details yeah on the time sheet detail you have is from pto that's probably yeah, the one you exactly. want to look for yeah okay so i want to know that those eight hours i want to remove it we saw they were all there so there's a checkbox on the time sheet details there yep. that is that is if it's from pto it's checked okay but it's not on the time sheet split object it's on the time sheet detail object and we did a report time for only time sheet split 
Okay, but that's what's interesting with report type. So I'm going back again, report type. I'm opening up my timesheet split report type that we've created before. And if you look here, you have a section called layout. So I'm gonna edit that layout. It's a weird UI and this is uh, something I, I didn't know. And I think this was there forever, but I didn't know it's very useful. Uh, but if you click here, add fields related via lookup, it's going to bring up that interface and then you can see you can go back to any object that uh, we're looking up to that the timesheet split is looking up to so now here I, let's say i want to go to the timesheet details like dominic is telling me and there's one is from all day and is from pto i'm going to bring those two fields and as you can see here they've been added as a lookup as a lookup when it's custom object or even when you're adding custom field those fields, they won't be available in your report type unless you come and come and drag it here. So if I had to, if I have added a field on the timesheet split, I need to come here in my layout and add it back uh, to be able to use it in my report. So that's also a twist. Okay, so we have those two fields here. I'm just gonna go save. And if I go back to my report, I'm gonna refresh the page. Uh, and now I'm going to let's do filter because we want to filter them out. I could have added it as a column, but let's filter it out. And now I just by searching is, I see it now. But you see there's a columns here, timesheet detail. So it's telling me it's the information coming from the timesheet detail is from all the day. I want to add it and I don't want them. So false. And I'm going to add the other one is from PTO to false. Okay. So that's very powerful. If you uh, don't want to add fields on the timesheet split, because I could have created a formula on the timesheet split to look up that value. But this is requiring less customization, less uh, adding fields to object. You just do it by report. So it depends. If you want to see it live on the object itself, you should uh, put a, a, a value, a formula on the object. If you just want to use that value in a report, uh, then you uh, you can just do what we did. So now meaning that our reports are not showing those eight hours. So if I go back to my dashboard, uh, let's refresh it for all the data. The eight hours that we had before should be removed. Drum roll. It's computing, computing. Here we go. Good. Anything else, Dominic, that I forgot? Yeah, we have two questions. And the other thing I just thought about is the uh, eventually the formulas that we can build into the reports that could be that oh, yeah, of interest. I wanted to show that. Uh, but I have question? two questions. Uh, yeah. uh, two questions. So one question is, that can, you, can you view on the report the timesheet split and link them to the task assignment schedules? Uh, to see, this is to see what what amount of hours has been scheduled versus the hours that has been captured on the timesheet. So to be able to do actuals against schedules or actuals against uh, the, time. Uh, you have the, uh, I, um, I don't know you by have, art, what's the path? We have the lookup to the project assignment itself. There's a few roll-ups at different places. Uh, to be specific on the task assignment schedules, we don't have that lookup out of the box. Uh, but there's either different ways of doing it. But the uh, ultimately, what you want to look at is the resource utilization. Uh, so you could have your resource utilization either calculated by month or by week. And that would kind of roll up everything together as far as how many hours were scheduled and how many hours were logged. Uh, so that might be in that case using the resource utilization records uh, records uh, to do that. Otherwise, depending on volume, uh, because timesheet split could be an object that uh, depending on how many resources source and uh, if all your people are saving and submitting the timesheet at Friday at 3 p.m. and you have uh, hundreds and hundreds of line on each timesheet, it could be uh, an object that is uh, uh, time uh, CPU expense extensive. If it's a it's SAS, that doesn't apply, but that can, uh, but the point I'm making is that you could create a process builder or a flow would be better uh, to stamp that value if you want, if we don't have that relationship, uh, but because I do believe you can 
follow back. Yeah, right? the, you, yes, and it's one point. But, so but you can directly, it better, uh, but it's not there out of the yeah. box. Out of the box, it'd be resource utilization that you're looking for a uh, anonymous attendee that asked that question. Okay. Uh, and there's another one from Al also that says, keen to know if we can build a burn down in Crow or would, have, would I have to set up the appropriate hours report and then export the data before working on this in Excel? Uh, burn down, it's complex. Uh, burn down would be required. It's feasible, uh, but you would need because a burn down, uh, if we're talking about a, an agile burn down, but an agile burn down, it's a decrease of hours plan. Is that maybe all if you want to uh, if you want to look at it, because I've tried to build one uh, two weeks last week. It was a request from the team too. Uh, there's a couple of things that needs to be uh, implemented for, so your, your starting point and then end point. So this is still tricky to do, uh, but um, you could work with, and it's a daily thing, right? So you, it's a burning per a frequency of time. So you would need to uh, activate historical snapshot and snapshot time she uh, task task information uh, to see if they've been completed with an estimated hours and then they would reduce your total and you could get something close to that. But the reference line of the pure burn, you're going to have difficulty to have it. This is where there's a limit and Tableau might need be something you want to look into. And then with Tableau, you could do it uh, without any problem. Tableau is also a product from Salesforce. Anything so else? these are the two questions. Uh, did we answer correctly uh, those two? You can uh, either send a comment back or have any uh, any further questions. Uh, you can go ahead. But yeah, formulas. Uh, that's the other thing we could cover. Nine so minutes. So in to get our billable ratio, you need to know how many hours you did uh, uh, for the entire uh, period that we're looking into, and you needed to you need to divide it by the number of our billable hours that you did. So for this, we we would need to create some formula. Uh, okay, so I don't think we're going to have time to do uh, the exact uh, use case of that, but uh, I'm going to just show you how formula work. Uh, but this is the concept you would apply if you wanted to have a billable ratio percentages like we said at the beginning. Okay, so I'm editing my reports again. I want to make sure that uh, yeah that, that filter has not been added by error. I'm going to come back to my outline and in here in columns I have that context menu. I could have a summary formula or a role level formula. So if you want to do a maths and adding a new fields that doesn't exist, instead again of creating a formula field in your system uh, in the object, you can just do, apply a role level formula. And then it's going to give you all the timesheet split information. So let's say you wanted to do a conditional thing, you could, but let's say I just want to do a, what's the uh, uh, bill amount times uh, the hours, for example. I would just insert this. I, I do believe it's a field we have, right? But uh, and I could multiply yeah, it. Yeah, because it's a bill could, rate. Yeah, bill rate times the, the hours. Rate in times this the case, hours. Yeah. So I could easily add that kind of field. Okay. If I wanted to have a, a um, a section level, a summary summary level, or maybe I should have added for reference, but let me add a summary formula. The summary formula is going to take everything back to a person or to a date. So the highest level of grouping we have on the left. If you recall here, you see it in the back, we're grouping by date, by project. So it's going to get me that level. So I could do something like uh, um, total hours, could be hours divided by, I think there's, is there non-billable hours, Dominic? Out of the box. Uh, no, you'd have to, in that case for the timesheet, you need to have total number of hours that are non-billable and, and billable. Um, okay, so uh, I that's why I needed the rule level before uh, and my in other system, I had that, but this is gonna give me the sum of all the hours for that level. And then I can divide it by, uh, uh, let's do the opposite. Let's divide the bill amount divided by the number of hours. It's not a good example, uh, but this is going to get me an average rate, right? Yep. And then the, yeah, and the, the concept, yeah, and the concept is also that you can have, uh, as you see in the bottom left corner, you have either some average 
minimum or maximum or unique value so that you can define what you're actually using as a summarized value. Uh, it doesn't need to be the addition of all of those uh, grouped records. It could be an average, it could be uh, the minimum or the maximum. And you can have ifs in there also. You could say if this my billable, you know, this time entry is marked as billable, then use it into the sum. Uh, so you can play around with the numbers without having to create fields, as we said, and make logical, uh, you know, summarized value. Let me just see if I can show you the formula for the billable I have in my other org. And as you see, what we have in the average rate on the very right uh, side, uh, you know, you, we don't have any values as far as the, you know, on the white lines. So project director, the first line, TS 1929, it has a dash or at the ends because it's not, it's this, it's a, you know, uh, it's a it's subtotal. A, yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's not it's not a, a showing for each line. It's showing only for the summarized value. So the, the for for example, the formula here would be like the uh, total billable hours new, uh, the sum of it, uh, and this is exactly what I did, right? You see, crew time sheet. I'm getting the crew time sheet, the total billable hours, because I have that information on the time sheet, and then I'm divide. I'm adding it to non-billable hours, billable hours, and I'm doing a, because this is not just a timesheet split report, it's a timesheet report, uh, but this is the, the formula I've used for uh, on the Drake side to get that, uh, that value. The concept here is that you can have that, you know, we have different ways in client where we have that billable percentage utilization. Uh, but now that we have that on the report, then we can have it for just a certain period of time. So we can play around with that period as we're just recalculating it in our report. Uh, then we have full flexibility on showing the data. We're not stuck necessarily in, okay, resource utilization are calculated in month. Yeah, but I'd like to have it for the last six weeks. Then, you know, you're able to play around with that data as you kind of recreate those formulas on any reports on the on the, the the most basic object which is the time sheet split in that case good so uh, the idea is that uh, okay it's great to build those dashboard uh, as you can see there's a ton of options so you need to have a good idea of what you want to do uh, it's a lot of i'm sorry it's a lot of trial and error uh you you, you try something you don't see the result uh as you saw i'm not filtering by date to start with, I, I've used a filter in the dashboard. This helps usually be to get a better understanding of the data. Before, after that, maybe nailing it down to not have the filter, but only looking at this week. So if you're doing always a meeting on Friday or always on Monday, you want to always look at last week, you got, you can nail down those and you don't have the filtering anymore. Uh, but the, the most important thing is to have dashboard and to look at it with your team. Uh, otherwise, it's going to definitely help in structuring and provide that visibility and accountability and helping course correct and induce uh, better behavior uh, for the team as well. One last question slash comment uh, uh, by Liesl. Uh, for the burn down, going back to that explanation earlier, uh, could you use the uh, project baseline object as a snapshot and build your chart on the remaining hours? Yes, you could. Uh, baseline, uh, you need to do it manually. Some of it could do, I'm not saying you can do everything. We need to discuss your specific, but the baseline, it, you press the button and it's creating a copy of uh, the project object with some fields and the task object with some fields, right, Dominic? Yes. And then you can use that, but it's a manual process. The uh, If you use a historical snapshot, what's another concept that we didn't cover here, it's going to be the uh, same thing, but it's automatic. So it can snapshot every Sunday. Uh, the value or every day the value so i think you can go up to the day increment uh, so it's going to snapshot it automatically so this way you're making sure you're not dropping any values in between and you're getting that uh, um, occurrence or that uh, gap uh, sequence uh, always the same and interesting and it's a bit complementary to this because basically to do an historical snapshot you'd build a report comprised of the fields that you want to snapshot on that object. And that's basically the snapshot that, you know, the report would kind of serve as what data do you want to snapshot? So it's very, it's very flexible. So as far as what you want to integrate in there. The only uh, warning would be, be careful, depending on the object and the volume, it's recreate another set of value all the time. So if you're looking at all time sheet in your report, it's going to copy all time sheet every time you're running that thing. So uh, watch out for volume. Uh, so you need to be intelligent while building it, but it's a great tool to look at the progressions during, uh, in time. 
Okay, and awesome. then one last one, uh, no. just to wrap, uh, and it's going to yeah. be a good closure. Uh, so it's, uh, if, if there's an offline documentation for that, I would, uh, uh, for building dashboards and reports, I'd, uh, you know, we'd stir you toward uh, trailheads from Salesforce. As it sells, there's, they have a, a very extensive database for training. So if you go to trailheads.com, uh, you'll be able to find some information on dashboards and reports. Yeah, until we get our own at client, uh, we're building our trail and it's going very well. So uh, soon you're going to have it from our side. But yeah, please go to Trailhead. Uh, we'll make sure that Ilan is sending those uh, those link maybe of trails in the recap email. Thanks, Dominic. Thank you everyone Thanks. for being here. See you next week. Talk next week.